Hey everybody, I hope you're doing fantastic. This is Brett Tadlock, TN Artist. Uh, just enjoying the day here. It's a beautiful spring-ish kind of day uh, in the 60s and just beautiful sunshine. Windows are open. Everything's kind of blown around. You may hear some background noise here and there just from the neighborhood that I'm in. Uh, but it's a beautiful day here in, ten in Tennessee. Uh, by the way, somebody asked me, what is TN Artist? Well, that's what it stands for. TN is, is the abbreviation for Tennessee. So it's Tennessee Artist because I'm in Tennessee. So that's what that is. So um, I just spent the past hour painting this tutorial that we're about to watch and go through. And then realized after I had said it was all done, wrapped it all up, and was bringing it over here to do the stuff on it, none of the audio recorded. My cable had come loose, so there was no audio. <laughs> So I'm going back now to spend the time with you guys to give you the, as best I can, walk through voiceover for everything that we've got going on here. So we're just going to go through this as best I can and try to recall every step of the way on this speed to help you guys go through it. So what I've got here is an 8x10 canvas, 150 dpi, and I believe I've got the cold... Uh, press watercolor paper and the pigments to, turned on, the true pigments. So that way I can get a nice blending of the color. And so uh, I didn't want to add a whole lot of texture to it, so that's why I went with the water, cold press watercolor. And I'm going to take the fill tool here and I'm going to put it on wet the layer. And then what I'm going to do is uh, come over to some of these colors. Now the colors I have here are the oil paints that come with Rebel. And I've added in a few here and there, like this plain air and this agate gray and the uh, different ones there that are from the Pantone's uh, Colors of the Year uh, website. Just Google that, Pantone Colors of the Year. And I just added them in. And I tried to be really aware of any time I'm painting here to show you guys the hex codes that I'm using. So anytime you see this pop up, feel free to pause it and look at it. And then what I'm talking about here is the fact that we're going to use the colors that are mostly in this area right through here that are less saturated for value and for hue. Okay, so we're going to stay a little bit lower down here and kind of go with these more neutral colors and build up the layers more. All right, so now that we've kind of gone with the colors that we want, which is kind of going to be this greenish blue kind of gray color, um, we're going to wet the layer and fill that. And this is going to be our foundation for what we're painting here. Okay. And now that I've got that in there, I'm going to go with um, the Express Oils and the Smooth Knife. You could honestly use any brush that you wanted to for this if you want to, because we're going to lay it in just to get kind of a feel for uh, what we want. We'll soften this back out. So I'm using just medium pressure here and streaking in some color for where I want to have the background start laying it in uh, and building up those sky colors. And so we're going to use a number of different colors through here. But the main thing we're doing is trying to build the sky and not um, come directly down to right here, which is the middle of the canvas. All right, we're going to be close to it, but not quite. Um, maybe, you know, just barely off. So we're going to build this up and the colors for this and start laying it in and just kind of go back and forth. Okay, so there's the hex code. And that way you can grab it and uh, see what we're doing. So we're going to come over a little bit and add it a little bit more purplish. So there's that code again. Now that we've got that, we'll just go ahead and start painting it in a little bit more. And changing the color just a little bit. And putting in a little bit more blue for the actual sky and getting a good feel for it. And the key here is not really worrying about, um, all we're worried about here is just putting color down, okay? Not trying to paint clouds or anything else at the moment, just color. And we're going with a little bit darker gray here to indicate maybe where some clouds had moved in or just kind of a an interesting look to it. And then for here, thinking about, okay, where am I going to put in some of the clouds on and kind of go through this peachy color. So what I'm doing is, is thinking about using um, complementary colors. So if I've got a purplish color and I use a yellowish or an orange color and blues, 
then I've got complementary colors. That's going to give a little bit more interest. All right. And so not really worrying about the clouds right now, just kind of visually giving myself a landmark for where I want it to be, because I'm going to go in and blur all this out. So that's what we're doing right here. It's just kind of getting an idea for where stuff's going to go. And then I'm going to bring this over to four, which is the blend mode. And I'm going to bring it up. And you can either use the knife, smooth knife, like I did here. So whatever brush you're using, you can use it if you want to. And just soften it out. Or you can even switch to a different one. It doesn't really matter. Like this knife soft works good if you're trying to keep these painter strokes going through here. We'll see how that kind of softens it out and blends it all together. That's what we're going for. And you can go in and soften this as much as you want or as little as you want. By the way, somebody also asked me one time, what is this orange circle that you're seeing? That's just where the recording software shows you where my cursor is, so that way you can track it as I'm going over stuff, just to make it easier. It has nothing to do with Rebel. Now what I did here is I'm duplicating the layer because you can duplicate it and then turn off the color pigment, go to multiply, and you can intensify the color, but that's obviously too intense. We're going to bring that down to oh, maybe 25% or so and see how the difference. Okay. And then once we've got that there, we'll just merge those back down and turn the true pigment back on. Now I can go back and start adding in some clouds. And what I'm doing here is just the shape. This is really the top outline. Okay. So I'm trying to get that laid in there to get kind of an idea of where I want. And then I'll grab a little bit of the white and softly go in with it kind of where I want it. And then maybe that plain air bluish color and just kind of go back and forth. So I'm laying the, again, the, the, We've got some of the um, complementaries, the blue and the um, orange there. And then what I've done here is I've switched back to blend, and I'm just doing circles to kind of blend them together, just little circles. And then they're cross horizontally to kind of fade it in. Now, one of the things I think I mentioned when I was originally recording this, but unfortunately you didn't get to hear it, <laughs> is that um, I spent about 12 hours on the other painting that I'm using to model this one after. And I didn't record it because I was doing like 12 hours. It was just you know, 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, that kind of stuff. But I wanted to go back in and give you guys the foundation for how I painted that. And that's what we're doing here. So all I'm doing now is I'm just streaking in some additional color and the same kind of thing you know, just kind of circle it in and then go back and horizontal straight across. So the cloud looks like it's blowing across. Okay. And you can spend as much time or as little as you want on these and really get that nice thing. But the main thing is, is just kind of playing around with the light so that you get that kind of a peachy kind of golden hour kind of light. And then just kind of soften it into the background. And again, just taking out some of that harsh edge. Okay. So now what I've done is I've selected some of this purplish color from the clouds up there made a new layer and I'm going to just kind of roughly draw in some distant hills or mountains off in the back. Okay. Just to get kind of a feel for it. And the reason I selected that purplish color from up top is because atmospheric perspective, it would be a little bit closer to the sky color the, or the atmosphere. And it also starts building color harmony. So now all I've done is just selected the uh, smooth knife 
and the blend, and I'm just softening all this together. And trying to get a little bit of that repetitiveness taken out of it. So it just kind of softens. And see how that pushes that back and gives that really distant kind of feel and look to it. But it instantly ties it together with the uh, sky. So now we're going to go with another color. I'm going to go with this kind of orangish color that you'll see here. So make sure to pause it to get the uh, hex code. And then on a new layer, we're going to just kind of repeat the process of putting it in and getting kind of a feel for where we want it to be. And this is going to be our kind of our, it's really going to be more of the mid-ground and foreground rocks. I'm kind of tying this shape together. So one thing right here is that uh, I know, being right-handed, as I go right to left, the natural inclination is just to kind of bring my hand down with the wrist relax. So if I'm doing that, I can fix that by making a rectangle, selecting it, and then deleting it. And that gives me a nice flat horizon line for doing it. It's a great way to do your, if you're doing beaches and stuff like that. So that water line looks um, straight because otherwise you'll be kind of pouring off the uh, edge of the canvas. Okay. So now I'm just kind of roughing in where I want this color. And then now that I've got kind of a feel for where I want it, and it's going to be these mountains off here in the background, I'm going to blend up some colors. So all I'm doing here is selecting some of these ochre colors. So the gold ochre, the yellow ochre, um, a little bit of this Indian red, and putting them on putting them on here and then blending them together. I like to blend on the canvas. There is a blending function in Rebel that you can have a little blending board off to the side. I just prefer to do it this way. Totally up to you. And then once I've kind of got the uh, stuff that I want, and getting the feel for it, that's when I'll select it with Alt and use that to start drawing it in. Now normally I would use the lasso tool, which is what I'm discussing here, for doing these shapes. But I can also just click Control and click the layer to select the whole layer, and then I can just quickly go in and add these, add this all to it. I'm now going a little bit darker because again I'm trying to get that red clay kind of a look and so I'll just add a little bit more brown to current start kind of streaking that in and I'm not worried about this being smooth I want this to kind of be choppy and streaky because I'm just building up layers of colors And this is just a matter of going in, and once I get there, I deselect it. Now I'm just adding some extra interest of putting some boulders at the top and breaking up this silhouette a little bit. And I want to add a little bit of a purplish tint to it, so just dragging in some grayish purple to add over top of this. And then once again, get it on there, get kind of a feel for what I want, blend it together with four. And once I've got it blended, I just use Alt, select it, and that becomes my painting color. The exact same as I would do if I were using traditional paints.
but just show you what we're doing um, and how I kind of got there. Like I said, on that other one, I spent 12 hours doing it, so I didn't record it. Um, but I wanted to give the foundation here for what I did. And so that's what we're doing is just going through and giving you the foundation for everything. Now I'm just trying to get an idea for the way the land flows and looking at the different, um, thinking about how the land is actually laid. Okay, so the, that's why I want these strokes to represent all of that. And so like if it's going more vertical, I want the strokes to be more vertical. If it's going more angled, I want the angle to be there. And now it's time to start doing the same thing with the water. So one of the interesting things with the water is I want to um, start grabbing some of the different colors around and then start um, putting it, you know, laying it down. So that way I've got some of the browns uh, to represent where the water is more shallow. And then grabbing some of the sky color as well and laying it in there and streaking it in. So it's just a blend of all the different colors because, again, this is going to bring color harmony. And as these layer on top of each other and I start getting it in there, then the next thing I want to do is just start selecting from where some of these colors overlap. Okay, so a very similar thing to how we started with the sky of just laying it in and getting a feel for um, the colors and the, the values that we have here and just um, letting it mix on the canvas itself. And so see how I select an area, I get the color, then I select it and start putting it in different spots. Because again, that's, that's going to give you some more harmony in the, in the thing that you're working on. And so as you can see, I'm just trying to get in splotches of color, working my way around and thinking about where the light. So ultimately the light will be kind of sh coming across here, shining from the upper left corner down across to the right middle. All right. Now that I've got some of that laid in there, I'm going to go to four and same brush that knife smooth. I'm going to make this motion. So this kind of banana motion back and forth like this. Okay, so this kind of motion, just working my way across all the blue. All right. So I'll start over here, switching it to blue just in case I accidentally switch back to where I'm painting and I don't paint red, and just back and forth, back and forth, working from one side of the canvas over to the other. And this is what blends those colors together and starts giving us the feel of waves and water that's kind of moving around. You know, that may be a little choppy or um, blown across, but not like massive waves.
And then as I get to areas like this, that same banana stroke or comma stroke, or whatever you want to call it, elongates and becomes flatter and more horizontal. So just keep going back and forth. <clears throat> But it's this play of browns and blues and stuff that can really make it interesting. And then once I've got it figured out for all the stuff in there, I start looking for areas where I want to possibly have waves that are actually building up. Now, this may be a little difficult to see here, but you can see where I'm just building up those areas. It's that same stroke, you know, that same comma banana stroke, but I'm just bringing it up, you know, up more. Think of like a... Instead of just like a banana laying on its side, it's more of a J laying on its side backwards so that it's, you know, kind of curving up to the right. So. So now what I'm doing here is I'm taking a little bit of this greenish blue color, going back to the land, and just kind of, again, painting it in, getting a feel for it, a little bit of this chromium and cadmium green. And once I've got it in there, going to four, and then just smearing it around to get the color that I want. Once I've got it, alt, click, and Use that to start painting, again, paying attention to the direction of the lay of the land. Just brushing it in, getting a feel for it, letting it kind of fade over different sections, and then selecting that color and bringing that down to break up some of it. Because all of this is going to be in shadow, I wanted to break up the green a little bit so it wasn't just a big blob of green, but instead it looked like, you know, twists and turns in the land. And you can take as much time as you want in this, but again, I'm just trying to give you the foundation for doing everything, not the complete finish. Already done the finished painting. So now what I want to do is take some of this yellowish color and start laying in where the light is going to be hitting it. Because remember, the light's going to be coming from the upper left and cascading along, catching the edge of this cliff and into that boulder that's right there in the middle, or slightly off middle. So I'm trying to lay in where that's going to be hitting. is going to be in shadow. So that light's going to kind of hit and bounce across. Again, go to, to here, add in some of that same. There's that cad, I mean the uh, yellow that I'm using. Brush that across, get a feel for it. And then blend it 
and then I'll select the color again. And you could use the stencils to do this. I'm just freehanding it because I felt like painting it for a little bit more. Deeper painterly look. But if you want to use the stencils as a starting point, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. I said before, stencils don't paint it for you. They just help you save time. So now what I'm doing here is just adding in some of the shadow color on that side. I'm trying to refine the shape of the rock. And then add some up here on the so that way it kind of gives that feeling of the light cascading across and catching the top. Now I want to go a little bit bluish because there's one rock up there I wanted to add a little bit of blue tone to, that one right here. And so now that I've got it there, I can four, smudge it out, select it again. And it kind of gives that same look. So now that I've got it selected, I can use it here to represent some other rocks that are here. And again, tying more of it together. Up this green a little more with some darker colors kind of thrown in and some shadow. So we've got this part of the midground about in the fort. Well, I guess really this is more of the foreground, but you know, probably about half to three quarters of the way done. Just kind of looking for places to break up large sections of color and give more just hints of definition. And again, I'm picking colors from around the canvas to kind of start try tying some of it together. So now I want to switch to working on the water. And I'll come back later and work on this hill back here. But for right now, uh, work on this water a little bit. So we've got kind of laid in where our waves are going to be. So the next thing is to start adding in some foam and some details to the waves. So what we'll do is we'll select around and then use that to kind of define where some of the waves are coming in. So you can use really any brush here. I'm using the knife smooth, but then you, you know, I'll switch to the charcoal brush. Um, well, it's really the pencil brush and then the textured and just kind of building up these areas of foam. So when you're laying in foam like this, you want to, again, keep considering the shape of the wave. The foam is going to define that. You know, how does this wave kind of the peak and then to the trough behind it? So that's really what you want to pay. Use the sky colors to define some of your lighter areas of where breakers are. You can even go in and draw like where the tops of it might be. Okay, this is where the top is. And it's going to come from there. So that's what I'm doing here. It's just kind of showing you where I'm thinking some of the main waves will be. Bright spots where some of the light will be hitting across. I'm not really paying attention to the exact right now. Just laying in where it's going to be at.
it's roughly going to be at. Again, this is where you define the shape. So I'm defining the shape of how the water is moving up to the top of the crest and moving down towards the trough, either in front of it or behind it. Once I've got it laid in there, I'm just going to 4 for the blend mode for the paintbrush and softening it and smearing it around. And that's really all this stage is, is just going back and forth and keep playing around. Now, one of the things is if you're doing this stage and you're not confident in your ability to paint it, do it on a separate layer. So that way you can delete it and go back and play around with it. But the main thing with foam is just remember to follow the shape of the wave. Leave gaps between the lights and the darks. So that way you have where the foam is broken and gapped. You can see the different colors below it. And then just have fun with it. Trust yourself to make erratic patterns. But I mean, any of these colors work. I mean, any of these brushes work for laying it in. And the key thing here is just select a round from the different areas and pay attention to what value is going on top of what value and what hue is going on top of what hue. And again, if they're closer to the front, they're going to lay out flatter, just like when we were doing the shapes of the waves themselves. Okay. And then once you've got that there, you can think about, okay, where is the water at on the beach? And so see how I'm drawing it in here? That gives you the edge of that water, like it's receding as it does. And then, again, just start adding in the different uh, bits of foam from the waves. And the contours of what you've already established with the painting, with the paint underneath it. So it's just a matter of building it up and building it up. You lay it on there, put it to four, soften it. Lay it on there some more, put it to four, soft the whole time, making sure you're keeping going with the direction of the wave, the way that it's laying. And so the same thing back here, just keep building it up as well.
And so again, here you can add in more lines to think about where the wave is going to be crashing on the beach, you know, as it kind of runs back. And so you can add in browns and stuff back here to make it look like where the water is more shallow. So if you want to have that kind of a feel to it. And then again, just lay it in, soften it, lay it in, soften it. So the now thing we're doing here is just trying to think about, okay, where is the light going to be hitting? It's whitish color in here to get a feel for it, and then we'll start adding in some even more um, of the highlights. But just adding in sparkles for where the, the sun is hitting it. And I like to use this flat knife, smooth knife, to kind of go back and kind of blend all these together. So now what I want to do is go a little bit lighter color and start adding in some sparkles. Now you can do it by just painting it on like this, okay? Or um, 
one of the things that you can do is add another layer, turn off pigment, go to overlay. And now you can just paint it and then blend it out. Just go in and start adding it across the different areas. Now up here I was doing the same on the rocks, but I don't want to keep that yellowish, bright, bright yellow color. So I'm going to undo that. Go back down to the rock layer and do the same thing I've been doing before. Paint it in and then go get the highlight and just keep going from there. And now the same thing for the grass. Back section and do Add in some just, you know, rough shapes in the background just to make it more interesting. adding in any extra highlights to really emphasize where the light is hitting the water, where the areas um, are staying shadowed. So now the other thing is taking the stencil, adding in some um, pebbles to give that feeling of the water sitting on top of the beach. So just uh, turn off the um, ratio so you can stretch it however you want, and then just take some of the color from the, around the beach and paint in some of the area. Now you can check and see about doing it if the above layer isn't too opaque, but this it was here, so then I uh, did it for a little bit and then switched to the top layer and paint for there. 
like so. And then it's just a matter of painting it in, pressing four to soften it because it kind of thins the paint and then just keep doing it back and forth. And just grab some of the blues and the browns and the purples. And some color harmony four to soften them up. You can just zoom in a little bit and select one of the other paint brushes, either the pencil or the oil brush or express oil, and then just paint back in some of the um, some of the lines from the water going over top of it, and then that seats the stones beneath it. And you can use whichever one you want. And one little thing here, make, make sure you select the right color. <laughs> I realized I had selected the wrong color around it, was painting uh, really good. But you can see how that pushes those stones below it, and it really gives you that feel of the water creeping over top of it. All right, so we're kind of honing in on finishing this up. Just a matter of adding in a few of the details and so forth. Again, sorry for having to do the voiceover over top of the full recording, which I, I just thought I had recorded it, but it did not. The cable had come loose. So um, I appreciate you guys watching this. I appreciate you being supporters, either you know on YouTube or Patreon or Facebook, whichever. Um, if you got something out of this, I hope you'll share it with others and help me grow this and just do me that favor. But, you know, as always, leave any questions, comments, or suggestions, and I will do everything I can to uh, get to them right away and help you, you know, become a better painter, hopefully. So have a fantastic day. I'm going to let this finish out, and I will see you on the next one.